You're listening to the Kick Your Boots Up podcast, where we swap stories of the West. Whether you're just waking up or getting in for the day, come on in and kick your boots up. Hi, everybody, and thank you for listening to the Kick Your Boots Up podcast. We have a special guest this week. But before we introduce him, I just want to remind you, please like, subscribe, and follow our channel. Leave us some comments, reviews. If you have something to say, we want to hear from you. We take the time to read everything, and we appreciate everything that you guys have been saying. So keep it up. But this week's guest is one that's really true and dear to my heart. His story is incredible, and I cannot wait for you guys to get to hear it. It's, I mean, you're going to leave speechless, but probably have lots of more questions. So um, I'm just so excited. But this is the cowboy entrepreneur, Scott Knudsen. He has a long rap sheet, but um, I think one of the, the best things about him is he's a family guy. He's a husband, a dad to Haley. I got to meet Haley's daughter. Yeah. She's an incredible yeah. soul. Love her so Thank much. You. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. He's an author of a book that's actually out now. You can buy it. It's um, It's called You Can't Crack That Egg Twice. He's from near around Fredericksburg, Texas. So there's a lot of stories there. I'm sure a lot of you like to travel there, including myself. Um, He's the host of the Cowboy Entrepreneur podcast. You can get that on Spotify, Apple, iHeartRadio, YouTube, of course. Um, He's currently filming, though, an autobiography called Lightning K Ranch. And it's basically his life story um, that's going to be on the big screen for the world to see the good, the bad, the ugly of his walk um, and what it's like with um, overcoming a traumatic brain injury, uh, the faith there, the family struggles, the everything together, the survival story. And of course, it's produced by the amazing award winning producer Rodney Stone. And wow, I mean, I just can't wait. I'm so excited. Uh, I'm really giddy just thinking about the details of the movie and how it's all going to play out. And um, I know we have a lot to talk through there. But first of all, Scott, thank you so much for clearing your schedule and allowing um, yourself to be available to be on the podcast. I'm so excited to have you here. Oh, thanks for the kind words. And, and thank you for having me on the podcast. I love it. I, I, I listen and watch it. And we follow everything y'all do. And uh, when we were in Dallas and met you and the whole team, it was so special. It, it was just a great time and y'all just welcomed, welcomed us like family and appreciate everything you and everybody at Justin Boots does. Well, thank you, Scott. Yeah, it was very, very special. It, for those of you that don't know or want some backstory there, we were actually able to meet up at WISA. And um, that's if you haven't, if you're not familiar with WISA, then you need to go back a few podcasts and listen to our podcast episodes and learn what that is. But um, yeah. it was just really cool to be able to sit sit down and, and talk to your family and hear your life story from your family's perspective. Even talking to Haley. I mean, she's just graduated high school and she's well beyond her years. So wise. And it, it shows you. a lot about you and your wife for raising her up to be um, the woman that she is today. So huge shout out to your entire family. Love them lots. And um, yeah, it was such a great time meeting you in Dallas. Absolutely. I appreciate it. (laughs) Of course. And um, I think before we get started, I kind of want everyone out there to get some backstory on you personally before we dive a little bit deeper into the fun stuff. Um, So tell us a little bit about how you grew up and um, what it was like, everything about it. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Um, yeah, I grew up in Texas, you know, I'm a fifth generation cowboy and, and I love it. You know, my first day at home, they say from the hospital, my mom put me on my dad's calf roping horse, you know, and my dad was up there. I just grew up in the saddle literally. And I love business. So that's where the entrepreneur piece comes from. And, and in our Western industry, there's so many entrepreneurs, you know, and, and that's what we really wanted to focus on is tell those stories. So I just grew up that way, you know, um, riding horses and and playing in the dirt and 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 living that cowboy life, which I love. I still love it so much, and and uh, I've worn Justin forever. You know, we were just talking about beforehand. Ever since the '80s, you know, with the old ropers, you know. But um, we we wear them everywhere we go, and and uh, it, it, we went into the corporate world for a while, and 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 uh, that helped us, kind of shaped us a little bit. But we were always rodeoing or ranching uh, a lot of ranching we were ranching in the hill country and uh just just love the lifestyle love the people and i think you know between the people and the animals it just doesn't get any better wow i couldn't agree more i mean truly and then having to say that you're a fifth generation having that under your belt it's it's got to be i mean you've probably heard some stories over the years of the generations in your family that have gone through hard times happy times even so do you have a memory yeah. of that like do you have do you have stories or memories of um what it was like for your ancestors your grandma grandpa um what well, just tell us a little bit about it if you if you yeah do. you know they all grew up on a, in a saddle you know even my grandpa he'd he'd ride the mule to school 
And uh, because they didn't have horses back those days, that was a long time ago. And my dad was a calf roper and he also had race horses, you know, in the quarter horse world. And, and, uh, and, uh, you know, I, I hear the stories. I don't remember them because some of the accidents, but I remember, I don't remember, I was told that I'd go to the feed store, you know, and that was like my happy spot, you know, and I'd hear all the old cowboys sitting around the table and talking and telling their stories. And I always wanted to be that person. I wanted to have stories in this industry because I love it. You can tell by my passion, I get excited about it, but so many good people. And now my daughter's a sixth generation. It's something we take serious. We don't, we don't want to waste that opportunity and we can't meet enough good people. So well said. This industry is full of great people, oh, including gosh. you, of course. Um, Thank you. But I really love what you said that what you said there because um, with Haley being a sixth generation cowgirl, that um, that goes to show that you guys, yes, you took the appreciation for the corporate world, you learned business, you learned that side of it, but then you still mm -hmm. were humble enough to come back to the ranch and and keep the legacy alive. And so I've got yeah. to ask. Then I'm genuinely curious, what is it like? having your daughter now getting to live on the name and eventually a long, long down the road, a long, long time down the road, she'll get to eventually take over the ranch and keep that, that legacy alive. What's that like? Oh, it means everything. It, it, it absolutely everything. It's nothing we forced on her. It's something she gravitated to on her own. I mean, she was a dancer and did everything else, but she was always at the barn. Um, even when I was training a lot of horses, you know, uh, been with AQHA for a long time and American paint and all those guys. And we always were training horses so when she was little bitty, we hung a swing set off of one of the horse walkers. So she was down there with me. So as I'd work horses and cool them down, she was on that. It was kind of like a red net six flags, you know, but that was my way of her being down there with me and I getting to be with her. And, and she carries it on. I mean, she has a great temperament for all the horses, all the animals gravitate toward her. And like today, she's at a studio doing her thing, but in a couple of days, she'll be back at the barn feeding, you know, and, and, uh, Love it both, you know, and I, I'm I'm so glad also because I think women and in, in, in cowgirls in general have, have had the respect, but they do so much more. And that's where I'm so excited with breakaway roping. And there's so many events for the cowgirl. And I think with the movie and our TV show and different things like that with Haley and, and with so many other talented people, it's going to lead more people to see the true value of the cowgirl. And that's where I'm excited for her to get to lead that or be a uh -huh. part of it. Yeah, that's that's a very good point. I'm so glad you brought that up. Being a woman in the industry myself and um, seeing all of the incredible women like Tad Lucas that paved the way for us that um, now I would right. love for them to be able to come back. Not that that's possible, but I would love for them to see what life is like now with the, I mean, endless opportunities for money and oh. breakaway roping. That's just huge. I'm so thankful to have been a part or living on earth the same time that this is happening because yes, it's so exciting. So that's a very, very good point. Um, and then one thing too, I want to go back on, I want to know now I'm curious about the, um, how people in the beginning started carnival rides, because I'm pretty sure they started it at your ranch because that is amazing with <laughs> yeah. the swing with Haley sitting in the swing at the Walker that, I mean, wow. If you're listening out there and you need some babysitting advice, it sounds like that's what you need to do. <laughs> it was awesome. It was awesome. You know, she'd say faster, daddy, faster, daddy. And I was like, maybe these horses need to cool down, not go faster, <laughs> you know, but it was fun. You know, we just had our own games, you know, we would chase the chickens and, and just, just made memories down there, you know, and it, it's nothing better. And, and her friends, you know, on her dance team, you know, these young ladies would come out and they just wanted to see a horse and then pet a horse. Mm -hmm. And these are just great dancers and uh, never been around our industry. And, and they started riding the horses. We taught them how to rope. And then some of them made division one teams and uh, it just the industry opened up for them. And, and, and that, and their first generation, which is even, I, I don't know if it's harder, but it's, it's so special to be that. And we talked about that at the morning, they wouldn't go home. It'd be two in the morning. They're like, let's rope a little bit more. And I'm like, Oh my goodness. So our industry is blessed by a lot of good men and women. Absolutely. Yeah. And they've paved yeah. the way for everything that's about to happen in the future. And I'm glad mm -hmm. that we are talking about Haley because she's really not, I mean, she's your daughter. So obviously she's a huge part of your life, but she's a really big part of your story. And one thing yeah. that I really held, <clears throat> held on to that we can talk about later is um, the fact that you guys, after the accident got to, because Haley was so young, she was a baby. You guys got to learn to read together, walk together, write together. And I think your bond's incredible. So I think now is the time for the world to get to hear your story. Oh. So tell us a little bit about your experience. Um, I know that you probably don't remember any of this. So tell us what you were told and um, just share with the world what, what happened to you. 
Okay. So when my daughter was one, it was her one year birthday. It was raining off east of us about 15 miles. It wasn't at our place. And my, my wife, she's a city, you know, she was a city girl and a model and just beautiful, you know, but didn't grow up in the agricultural industry. And she, she moved out here because of our daughter and, and she called me and I was out probably doing horse stuff. And she was like, come to the barn. I got something to show you. And I went up there and she was holding the Haley. Once again, it was her birthday and my wife cleaned the tractor. And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> you know, it was like my birthday. And uh, we were standing there looking at the tractor and I had the horse next to me and I was holding my daughter in my left hand. And it was like, you know, that peaceful, you know, the painting you always see, you know, just a family enjoying the ranch. And out of the blue, a lightning strike came and, and it came in front of my wife. She was on my right hand side and it went in my head and out my left hand. And, uh, after that, it was chaos. You know, um, there was horses running around and and be, bouncing into each other. The sprinklers came on, but um, it, it was chaos. And and uh, thank God, you know, my daughter wasn't hurt. I was the ground. My wife's eyes and ears were a little bit messed up, you know, but for a couple of days. But it was the loudest noise and the brightest light. And it, it scared. It, I don't know if it scared us at first. We didn't realize. And Tracy, my wife, has told me a lot of the stuff that went on because I just don't remember. And all my memory from before the lightning is gone. But, uh, you know, we made it to the house somehow. And I was trying to, you know, unsaddle the horse. And there was just commotion. And being hurt so much, like I've been dead three times. I, I, I've, I've, I've overcame, you know, and with my wife, you know, we just overcome and I thought we'd be fine. And we really didn't realize because it wasn't raining. And you always hear, yeah, when you get hit by lightning, it's kind of a joke. And we didn't realize what just happened to us. And we get in the house and I tell Tracy, I'm okay. And she wants to stay with me, but I'm like, babe, we got to, we got so much to do. And that's just, I think that's the grid of the agriculture industry. You know, you just, you know, put on your, you know, pull up your boots and just keep going to work. And, uh, she went to town and got a birthday cake because we had people coming for the next day. And we're young parents, you know, and she shouldn't have drove. And she came back and my face was black. And it was that's when it went downhill. And and, uh, you know, it, it, once again, the memory was gone. It messed up a lot of the inside. And heck, six months later, the feelings of my teeth would fall out. Just crazy stuff. But it 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 shaped our family in such a unique way. We never ran from it. You know, now it's our brand. It's the Lightning K Ranch. And and we never even talked about it until I was speaking at Texas A&M and they asked if I've ever been hurt. And that's where it kind of came up again. Um, but I had to learn to read and write again, like you said, and with Haley. And my wife was a teacher. She'd use the phone, the old phones to teach me numbers. And I, st I still can't read and write as well as my daughter does, but I'm trying real hard. And uh, but my wife had to run the ranch and she was a city girl. You know, let's go. Back. And now she's running the ranch and feeding. We had some over 50 horses and cattle and goats and it was busy. And now she's raising two kids instead of one. So our whole dynamic shifted and we just kind of worked through it. And by the grace of God, you know, we we lived. and. I, you know, I don't remember this. My wife said that we went in the hospital and they were like, just go home. We're going to treat you like a concussion. And they're like, you got water in your lungs and you have all, all this stuff going on. And and, and uh, they were like, we don't know how to treat you. No one's ever lived from a strike that severe. <laughs> so we, we, we did start getting some therapy and start doing some things. And our doctors got Haley back in the hospital because they sent her home. They didn't see any burn marks on her just crazy things like that, that nobody really knew at that time, you know, that was 18 years ago. And, and, uh, you know, thanks, thanks to the horse, you know, looking in the mirror in the window at us, and it just made us want to get out there even more. And we just started living our life again. And, you know, I didn't know if it was like, I have metal in my face and neck and back, shoulder, knees. I didn't know if that caused it. I didn't know wrong place, wrong time or what. And they were just like, that's what it was. You know, you you were there and you were the tallest one. And I'm I'm glad I was, you know, I sure wouldn't want Haley or Tracy to go through it. And uh, but it made us tighter as a family. And we have that brand everywhere. It's on our chaps. It's on our horses, trailers, trucks. It's in our house on the floor. And and uh, because we didn't run away, it made our family closer. And And hopefully it inspires people. You know, when you get hit out of something out of the blue, no matter if it's lightning or something else, you can get through it. 
you can get through it. And that's what we talk about. Wow. I, I have so many questions and yet so little words. Um, yeah. I had even heard your story before and I'm, I'm even, you know, humbled even more to hear you say you. the words like I've died three times and nobody's ever survived mm-hmm. after this a, a lightning strike this bad. So what was, what was it like for you in that moment? Did you, did you really ever stop to think how bad it was? No, no. Uh, you, now looking back, I know it was bad, but I think if I would have realized how bad it was, it would have been harder to climb out of that hole. You know, and anytime I get hurt, I never think about how bad it is. You know, I always think about how great it's going to be to get back in that saddle or how great it's going to be to take my wife and daughter out to eat again. I focus on the positive. If I focus on how bad it is in that situation, well, you know, I'm shoving my own self down. I don't, I don't want that. I want to lift myself up and And I think that's been a lot of my recoveries have been that way. Just focus on the positive, focus on what I love. And that's God, my family and, and our Western industry. And they always are there for me. So, you know, every day is a a blessed day. Yeah, it is. And, and you are living proof of that for sure. And I love that you you mentioned the horse looking out and, you know, you, you looking out of the window and seeing the horses out there and, and how that kind of kept you going. But I'm sure you were able to incorporate the horses into your recovery process in some way. So tell us about the recovery process and tell us about the impact that the horses and the, even the industry had on you through, through it all. Did, was it something that a battle that you fought silently or was there able, were there people in the industry that were able to pour into you and help with whatever they could? Oh, that's, that's a great question. I've never been asked that. You know, a lot of it was silent because we didn't tell anyone and not that we were ashamed or anything. I didn't want to bring anyone else down. I didn't want to see the long face or anything like that. But like, you know, we go back to a and Once I realized it was okay to say stuff like that, I didn't say it for pity. I said it to inspire other people that what they're going through. But the horses have always healed me um, for sure. You know, of course, God and my family, but the horses have, you know, and that's why we work with nonprofits, with military, getting over the mind problems they have coming back and 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 people that have severe injuries working on the mind problems because you know the horses they're so big and they're so strong and they're so powerful but there's just a, this sense about healing about them and before we had our backyard fence they'd come up and look in the windows and um it, it was just special you know and my wife would sit me in a certain spot so I could look at them and I, I remember after I broke my neck I, I was sitting in my chair but she'd face it toward the window So instead of me thinking about getting well, I was going through, I was seeing the horses and I was making notes on the training process for each horse. So I was already 90 days ahead of what I am using that horse to shift my mind. If I was thinking about the pain or the recovery or anything like that, I don't think I would have got well as fast or as as good. Well, and you having no recollection of any memory before the strike and then also struggling to walk write, read, ride horses. Tell us about all of that because at one point you had to have, um, you know, looked down and learned like, oh, I'm, I'm actually doing this. I, I'm, I'm being a yeah. human again. So tell us about that experience. It was, it's, it's crazy. You know, it's whenever I go home to Georgetown, I'm from Georgetown, but I live, I've, we've been in Fredericksburg for over 20 something years. I didn't want to be that guy that snubbed somebody. I don't have any reason to, but I didn't want to walk by someone that I went to school with and and act like I forgot them. So my family's been really great about telling me stories or if they see someone coming up, they would always tell me. And now my mind is so fragmented because I know I don't remember growing up and a lot of just great memories, but I've been told so many times it's like I was there. So so that that's helped a lot. Um, but I've made so many new memories. I don't want to waste an hour not meeting somebody or riding a horse because you know, every day is special and you can't waste them. You know, I could not imagine laying on the couch all day watching TV when, you know, you got your door and there's real life and, and, you know, riding horses, they, they always cured me, but you know, I wasn't, I wasn't scared, so to speak, to get back on a horse. I never have been, but to remember how to do it right. And I wanted to do it in a respectful way for that horse. I didn't want to get on and just start yanking around and all that, like a greenhorn, you know, that's not me. Um, I was more worried about the horse. And there's a scene that Rodney and the team put in the movie about that. I I remember after I I, um, 
I can't remember if it was, I think it was when I broke my neck or shattered my face. One of the two, I was leading one of our, st our stallions and I was kind of offset a little bit. And my wife, I, I remember this so clear. She said, I've never seen you lead a horse that way. And I'm like, golly, and it still stuns me to this day. And she was right. I was protecting myself and she never saw me do that. So immediately I straightened back up, started, I focused, I refocused back on the horse. Everything worked out. So it, it always goes back to the horse and our industry. And I, I love that too. You almost naturally wanted to safety up to protect yourself. And really you're mm -hmm. like, no, just, just let it happen. Do what's normal muscle memory. Um, and this is kind That's of right. a harder question, but I'm curious. And I'm sure a lot of people out there are because not many people have gone through what you've gone through, let alone experience this type of memory loss. So what mm -hmm. has it been like trying to piece the stories together and did you ever at that time just feel like you wanted to get frustrated because you couldn't remember what story was what? Yeah. And, um, you know, th that would just, in my eyes, that would be just really, really challenging. That would be a hard part of it. It is. That's a great question. Um, yeah, it, you know, but I never, I figured if I couldn't learn frustrated, so I didn't mm -hmm. want to get frustrated. I wanted to, you know, once again, if I, I, if I started sensing like I was getting tense or nervous or something, I'd either go for a walk or if I couldn't walk because of an injury, my wife would help me get outside so I could see nature. I could go do something to refocus so I could learn again. It's hard to be positive in a negative state. I didn't want to be in that no matter what injury I had. And, and like you were saying about the memory loss. Yeah. It's frustrating. Yeah. I love to remember everything, you know, going to the ranch in West Texas with the family and, and, and growing up on horseback, you know, I, I, you know, but they, they've done so well telling me, that I've been able to learn, like, you know, my mom and dad, I did sat, I'd saddle a horse. And I'd be going for 15, 20 hours, just put food in the saddlebags and off I'd go check fence. Man, it'd be fun to remember it, but I'm remembering it when my parents told me. So I guess I am in a way, and that's why I'm going to look at it. Let's keep it positive. Um, you know, there's no sense in being sad. Shoot, I'm still here making new ones. Talking oh, to you, man, this is a good day. <laughs> exactly. No, it really is. And I think there's mm -hmm. a beauty in that because, um, you know, a lot of people get stuck in their ruts or get stuck in the past or want to dwell in places yeah. that they shouldn't dwell. And for you, you got to hear the highlights. You got to hear your life from other people's perspective. And to me, I think that's invaluable because we can be our own worst critic through situations, through times, through moments. And um, I just feel like for you, you get, you get to have kind of the best of both worlds. And I love, love, love that you're choosing positivity over that and you're choosing Thank to you. be an overcomer. So that's so inspiring yeah. there. Thank and, you. And what do you think it's like now? Like, what does it mean to you? Does it mean so much more now that you've survived what you've survived, gone through what you've gone through? And, and like you said, get to be here today. What, what is that like? Yeah. It's everything, you know, it's everything, you know, when the third time I died. I kill myself, not on purpose. I would, I work out a lot. I take care of my body. I was drinking water and uh, it's a long story, but anyway, I, I was gone. I came back and, and, um, I still work out a lot, but it, it was that every day is so special. You see it from a different perspective now. And that's why I love speaking at venues and such. I can't wait to tell someone how great their day is because sometimes when you're in the red of it, you don't realize really you're sitting in traffic for an hour. Well, heck, put on a good podcast, put on, put on your show. And all of a sudden the traffic doesn't really matter because they're listening to you. And, and that's, that's, it's just refocusing and retraining your mind to look for the light. So to look for the light and to be the light. And, and definitely yeah. I couldn't agree more with you there. And I can't help but ask you this. What is some advice that you'd like to give to anyone out there that um, has gone through nowhere near what you've gone through. Maybe it's a different battle. Maybe it's a smaller, bigger, it doesn't matter the size. What advice do you have for them? What would you tell them if they were in a rut? Because I, I'm so inspired by your positivity. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, seek God first and foremost, cause that's, that's always been the foundation and there's, there's nothing without a solid foundation. Uh, surround yourself with great people. Even if you don't have any, find one and then go to two. Um, find your, find your, find your purpose, your positivity, your happy spot. For me, it's our industry. It's the horse. And some people, it might be boating. Some, it might be something else, but find that, find that. So when you get, you're having a bad day, your mind can go exactly to that. That, that, that is a key. And then just know that every breath of air is, is a gift. 
you know, and it can always be worse, you know, even at my worst spots and I've been in a bunch, there's always someone worse, you know, and, and, and when I get to speak to some military vets that come back, you know, I'm, I'm so embarrassed to even tell my story because I know they've been through so much more, but sometimes it's just sharing, you know, sharing stories and, and, and being around positivity. But once you focus on the negative, that's what's going to happen. You have to believe that next day is going to be better than today and then set the steps to get there. Oh yeah. That's such good advice. Thank you for sharing that there. And I'm glad you brought up a few speaking engagements that you've gotten to do with the veterans Mm -hmm. with just, I mean, across the world, um, essentially just getting to share your story. Give us an inside look on what that's like. And and when you go up on stage to talk in front of small crowds, large crowds, um, do the feelings and emotions come back to you or just really tell us about what you're there for and and how you get to share your gift? Yeah. I've become so weak on stage. (laughs) <laughs> you know, when I started thinking about my wife and daughter, you know, and not the whenever I died because of the water deal and I didn't want to come back, I didn't hurt anymore. I didn't have debt. And I love my girls like nobody's business. And that kind of man, I tear up every once in a while. And and uh, but I think that's part of being real, you know, authentic. You know, I'm an authentic cowboy. But when I speak, it's it's all from the heart. And I tear up, but then there's so many jokes after that, you know, and I I love speaking. I love doing our shows and just being around people because people help elevate me and and Lord knows I need it. You know, every day I need to be surrounded by that. And when they laugh at something I'm speaking about, or if they get sad because something happened to me, but they feel better about their life, like, I'm glad I'm not that dude. You know, that, that, that's good. (laughs) You know, like, I'm glad that didn't happen to me, you know, um, that's what it's all about, but I love it. It's smaller, big venues. Um, we're going to be at the NFR all 10 days, just meeting people, but it, 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 they say it helps them, but I think really, and truly it helps me because the more, the more good you're around, just the better you, you can be. Yes, that is so well said. And and I agree mm-hmm. to that too. Just even getting to host people like you on the podcast, it's a good oh, avenue to to spread positivity in a world that is looking darker and darker every day. So uh, I, I commend you and I am so thankful for everything that you do there. But I know you. a lot of people are curious about this movie. They want to they know the details. They want to hear everything. And I know it's under wraps for now. I know you can't give us too much information, but for those of us that don't know anything about the movie, at least tell us a little bit about what you expect, what's going to happen. And tell us about what you can tell us. Absolutely. So Rodney Stone, like you said, Short Horse Productions. I'm so excited. They're going to be the executive producer. Um, Known the man, he rides horses religiously. I mean, loves the Lord, but he loves his horses. And um, he's doing the, he's, he's the executive along with me. And it's a true story. You know, we, we just opened up, you know, Daryl Campbell wrote it and he's written for Tim Allen, Carol Burnett, so many great people. I mean, God wrote the story because it's a true story. He just kind of put it all together. And, you know, it shows my wife, you know, from the city and the rich and how she just took over, you know, and it's a strong and my daughter growing up in it, you know, what it was like. And 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 with me, you know, just getting hurt. I think it has two two major hurt times I got hurt in it. But but just there's some rodeo scenes and horse scenes and racing. So it's going to show the industry really well. Tammy Lane's going to direct it. She she owns Capernaum Studios in Texas, and and her dad's a Hall of Fame horse. She grew up around it, but she's phenomenal uh, director. And uh, so it's they're going to see authenticness, and I, that's really important. They're going to see the faith. They're going to see the family. It's not a cheesy, bubbly kind of deal. They're not, hopefully don't cry, but they might get sad at some of it. But um, I just want something the industry is going to be proud of. But yeah, it's coming. It's coming fast for sure. It's a great budget and it'll be featured feature film. And, and uh, yeah, we're really excited about it. Uh, yeah, you should be. And I'm very excited yeah. for you. Even hearing you and Rodney talk about it when we got to meet in Dallas, um, I was immediately like, okay, I want to see it right now. I'm so excited, you know, um, and that's so good. I hope everyone out there gets just as excited, if not more, um, the more we start Thank getting you. to see trailers and teasers and uh, promos to buy your tickets and all of that. And so I'm sure if you're listening on the Kick Your Boots Up podcast, I'm sure we'll give you an update via social media or something to be able to share where you can go watch it. But I mean, wow, Scott, thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. You have been um, a huge blessing in my life to just 
really focus Thank on you. positivity, but then also just for everyone out there, I feel like you've just shed light on so, so much. And we've talked about things that were hard to talk about, and I appreciate your vulner vulnerability there. And we haven't, we didn't cover everything because we don't want to give the whole plot of the movie away. We want people to stay tuned, but spoiler alert, he's alive and well, Scott is in the flesh <laughs> and yeah. um, that's a beautiful story. So um, Scott, thank you for everything, for taking the time to share your story, for being so real and genuine and positive. We need more of that in the world. And I, I can't just, I can't say enough about you. So thank you. Oh, thank you for having me. I, I love just once again, I love everybody I met over in, in Dallas at, at the at this um, showroom. And thank you. And and sitting at standing at that table just talking for the 30 minutes we did. I, I still remember that. Like that, this is life. This is what's so good about what we get to do. You know, thank goodness for our industry and the boots and the horses, or I wouldn't have been there and you wouldn't be there. But it's the people. And and I appreciate you so much. I appreciate you having me on. 100%. I love what you said about the people. That is so true. That's what makes the world go around. And, and definitely oh, Jess, we got to give Jess a shout out to the marketing director here. Oh, um, she's awesome. The, yeah. Yes. The, um, just the camaraderie of the story shared with your wife, Tracy and Haley and, um, Rodney even getting to hear, um, his crazy life stories and Trent and, um, we're so thankful, but I know that there's a, speaking of people, I know that there's a lot of people out there that want to follow you. They want to learn, mm -hmm. listen to your podcast even. So tell us Thank where you. can they find you, your social media channels. I know I love following religiously on LinkedIn Thank of you. all places. So yeah. Um, yeah, tell us where we can find you. Yeah. Thank you. So our website is cowboy entrepreneur. So pretty simple there. You can find everything, but on Facebook and Instagram, Twitter, um, uh, it's cowboy entrepreneur, even TikTok. We're working on that, you know? Yeah, man, it's fun. And then on LinkedIn, it's my name, Scott Knutson, but everywhere else is cowboy entrepreneur, but the website kind of links you to everywhere you want to bounce and uh, so much fun and, and uh, love meeting so many people around the world because of it. You know, social media could be bad, but it's really so good. So great because of this, what we're doing. And, and somebody that's never been on a horse, hopefully after they listen to our show, with you and me, they're, they're wanting to buy a pair of Justin boots and go get on a horse. Oh yeah. That's, that's exactly that. We encourage that for sure. Absolutely. And I think I want to, I want to give a time right now to at least tell everyone about your book a little bit and let them know where they can find it. So, um, like I said, it's, it's the book called, you can't crack that egg twice, yeah. which yeah. I am excited to start reading because I know that there's a lot of your story there, but also a lot of good messages and encouragement. So where can they buy the book at? I think Amazon, Barnes and Noble, it's leadership books. If they go to leadershipbooks.com, that's the book publisher. Great guy, another great horseman, great follower of Christ. And, and he just, he does everything at a top notch level. So I was really blessed to find him and, and uh, he has that one out. We're going to um, launch our second book, um, Sovereign Reign at the NFR. And it's um, Sovereign God, but it's a horse reign. And it's 17 stories from the ranch and all true, you know, from, you know, just getting drilled in the dirt to ride in some of the best horses, and some of the best Coliseums. So we can't wait to launch that. And that'd be at Leadership Books as well. Well, great. I'm so happy to hear that you'll be at NFR. I look forward to yeah. seeing you. I Absolutely. encourage everyone out there to go purchase the book. Um, get excited if you have, if you purchase the book and you want to bring it, I'm sure that they can, you can follow along and learn where Scott will be. So he could maybe sign it for you. That would be incredible. Absolutely. But Scott, again, I can't say thank you enough. Please hug Haley and Tracy for me. I, well, I'm sold. I'm big fans of you guys. So um, keep up what you're doing. And, and I know we'll see each other again. I can't wait. I'm looking forward to that day. And thank you again. Thanks for joining us on Kick Your Boots Up. I'm your host, Taylor McAdams, and we can't wait to share the next story of the West. Until then, feel free to like, subscribe, and leave us a review. Follow us on social media at Justin Boots to keep up with our next episode. And we'll see you the next time you kick your boots up.